He is, uh, now this is kind of cool. He has a degree in aerospace engineering, so I think that makes you a rocket scientist, right? Technically? No, but, no, but couldn't, you, couldn't you squeeze that into there? Couldn't you, with a little bit of liberal, couldn't you squeeze that in? A rocket scientist. <laughs> he's the uh, co-founder and CEO of Panamplify, and he's going to talk about the star in our faults. Okay, so the star in our faults, it's a riff on Shakespeare's uh, play, Julius Caesar, the famous line, but in this case, I've reversed it. And the star represents strength, and faults, in this case, are our vulnerabilities, okay? And a West Pointer is up here talking to you about vulnerabilities. This is a West Point graduation just a couple years ago, uh, not unlike the 30 years ago when I graduated from West Point, and glory being the star and the strength that is embodied by West Point and perseverance and accomplishment and overcoming obstacles, etc. Well, the French writer Moliere really nailed it when he pointed out that the bigger the obstacle, the greater the glory. And West Point kind of shows you that and embodies that. But um, it leaves out a portion of, uh, of vulnerability. Oh, am I off uh, mark? No problem. So how do we get there? All right. We talk about externalizing your vulnerabilities. West Point breaks you down into the core essence of yourself so that they can make you vulnerable in every way possible externally. The inner vulnerabilities, which are our fears, are left alone. Now they break you down externally every way possible, even down to the haircut. But what they don't do is they don't address the inner vulnerability that is your fear that is, that is driving you within. Now, sweat is that fear. You don't let them see that fear because that is weakness. And to see that weakness makes you not only vulnerable, but you don't succeed. But when you focus on the external vulnerabilities, you can leave alone the inner vulnerabilities. Now this is Sh Lieutenant Shea Haver. She's a West Point graduate, and she's the first graduate of the Army Ranger course just last year, and she's slinging a 100-pound ruck. Now Shea is clearly carrying an external load here, but she's also carrying an internal load. Great book about the Vietnam infantry grunt called The Things They Carried really nailed it when they talked about the fact that, look, the instinct is to run. Uh, in many uh, respects, that's the hardest thing we have to do, and you can't put it down. In fact, you have to have an exquisite balance between that external fear and the internal. Here is Shay carrying a teammate, placing his life in her trust with the external burden that she's carrying. But she's required to carry her own internal burden, regardless of how much she's willing to place trust in others. Brene Brown, talked about by Michael in the first one, she has the most watched TED Talk of all time talking about vulnerability, and she's right. I expect vulnerability in you because that's courage, but I won't give you my vulnerability because that's called weakness. Jeremy Irons here in the, my favorite movie, The Mission, climbed up the top of the uh, cliffs to meet with the indigenous Brazil tribe. And he became vulnerable in the greatest way possible and played the clarinet in front of them. And ironically, they were drawn to him, which the brain doesn't understand that we are drawn to someone's vulnerability. So everyone has a trigger. My trigger is the dew on the, dra dew on the grass. Makes no sense to you guys. You don't know why that's my trigger. But it triggers my innermost fear. No one knows it. It almost seems silly. It hides in those little nooks and crannies that nobody knows about nobody talks about and every single one of you guys has one and most folks don't know what it is but that's okay but we all have it and we just don't acknowledge it so why is dew on the grass my fear well it represents the plane out in west point right outside the barracks where i had to take the pt test and i was deathly afraid of the push-up part i don't know why i'm not a huge bulky guy but i never failed the pt test nor the push-up part it was an irrational fear and i never told anyone People that know me know I overquote Tim Keller, and I will do it again here, but he's got it down. To be known is vulnerable. To be not known is, that's called hiding. And to be known and not loved is terrifying. We all know that. But to be known and loved is unbelievable. So fast forward, it's two weeks ago. I'm hanging out with a bunch of West Point buddies. We're drinking beers. We're telling glorious war stories. We're exaggerating everything that we did, doing everything that you guys know that we do. I don't know, out of nowhere, I throw out the dew on the grass story. I don't know why, but I got vulnerable and I'm not like that, okay? And it was met with the most crazy reaction, dead silence, 
and I'm, I'm a little ahead of myself, so that's cool. But vulnerability, you've got to show emotion, all right? That's all you need to know from this slide. So what happened? Everyone started sharing their own vulnerabilities out of nowhere. You got 10 West Point guys drinking beers, getting vulnerable on each other. You can imagine the scenario that was present with that. But it was met with acceptance, which led to strength. And we realized there was strength in our vulnerabilities. So I will leave you with what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of the thing that scares you? Or are you afraid, in, afraid of sharing the thing that scares you to death? I would argue that it's more powerful but share than to actually overcome that thing that scares you to death. I'd like to dedicate this to my 13 fallen classmates uh, in the class of 87 who displayed great vulnerability and paid the ultimate price. And I'd also like to dedicate it to my two teenage sons, Harry and Jack, in the audience here, so that they might, so that they might know vulnerability and realize that their star is, the, is, where, is uh, where the strength lies in their own faults. So thank you.